Hello everyone, I'm Jake, your friendly ant keeper and biologist. This is the My Living World's Ants channel. So, today, we're taking a look at Queen Ants and why many of us haven't been seeing the usual numbers in nuptial flights. And with that being said, let's get started. In the UK and a large percentage of Europe, nuptial flights occur between the months of June to August. Every year, different species of ants will produce batches of elates, male drones and princess ants known as virgin queens. These flights do vary between species and location, as well as environmental factors and many large colonies will have multiple flights throughout these given months. However, we have a big problem. This video isn't just about our ants, but about our planet, and what is affecting us is also affecting our ants. A few months ago, I did a video on how climate change affects ants, and unfortunately, we must return to this topic. Now, across the UK and Europe, there have still been many flights occurring, and England is known for its poor weather, but even the current weather conditions in the last few months have been almost laughable. Well, really, it isn't laughable at all. We must accept that there is a climate crisis, and even our ants are being affected. We are experiencing warmer winters and colder summers, with bursts of heat waves exceeding 30 degrees Celsius. I'm no weather expert, but tell me I'm wrong for expecting more than 12 degrees on a summer's day in early August. There has been an increase of short heat waves, flood warnings, and extreme weather. The biodiversity of millions of species across the globe is being affected, with ants being a key part of microhabitats. Just the changes in temperature alone can affect the survival, reproduction and geographical distribution of ants. This isn't even taking into consideration other factors like habitat loss, urbanisation, extreme events and pollution. Ants, however, do dominate many ecosystems and are known for their ability to adapt and overcome not just harsh environments, but also geographical changes. Ants are in many ways the perfect model for ecology and biology, but even climate change affects ants. All ants are ectothermic, meaning they cannot control their own body temperatures and therefore rely on outside conditions. Consistent weather patterns throughout the year are key for development of larvae, as well as activities of adult workers. Both for hibernation and for nuptial flights, temperature and chemical cues are vital for the functioning of an ant colony. So the big question is, where are all the queens? First, we have to take a look at the bigger picture. With climate change greatly affecting seasonal weather conditions, this in turn affects the entire ecosystem, including not just all invertebrates, but the birds and mammals too. Ant colonies of many species usually come out of hibernation from late February to April, thus meaning more time that these colonies haven't been developing their brood. After temperatures increase, the ants become more active, the queen will start laying eggs, and the workers will start foraging. This is the normal pattern that these hibernating colonies follow. Then, in several months' time, the colony usually begins developing summer brood, with elates. However, Recent years, especially 2021, seems to show a different story. With many colonies not coming out until late April to May, there is less time for these colonies to develop brood and increase their workforce, yielding a lower percentage of workers and elate drones and queens. With expected times for flights being between June to late August, this doesn't give nearly as much time for these colonies to prepare. This could potentially contribute to the decrease in the amount of elate sent out by individual colonies. Considering it is early August, this time last year, most ant colonies across the UK and Europe had more than half of their expected flights. This year alone, across different places in the UK, expected flights in this given period have been less than half. And even when exploring myself, I have only witnessed one nuptial flight period of two days. From what I saw, I can say these colonies were either very small in size or produced a much smaller quantity of elates. Last summer, I was lucky enough to experience a cloud of Lassius Niger flights more than once. This summer, the flying ants I saw were on the ground. Of course, there have still been many flights occurring as normal, but not what we should be seeing for this time of year. 
From wildfires across the globe in Australia and Greece, to floods in Germany and the UK, as well as many more extreme weather events across the world, it is evident that things are changing in this world. We must address this and stop ignoring climate change and global warming. If you haven't already watched my recent video on how climate change affects ants, I recommend watching it now. The link will be in the description below. With seasons being pushed later into the year, there is still a possibility of a late summer where ants and many other animals will still have opportunities to re-establish themselves. I know that this may not have been the video you wanted to watch, but it's certainly the one you needed to. I hope that this video was informative and gave you answers as to why you haven't been seeing as many queen ants. On a lighter note, the next video will be something much more upbeat, with some really funky and cool stuff, so stay tuned for that video. I would really appreciate your support, so if you could give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and share this video. See you in my next video.